Hello and welcome to El Microbiologist. Today, I'm diving into a topic that every medical student should know. ESBL producing bacteria, the stealthy threats lurking in our hospitals. So, what are ESBLs? That stands for Extended Spectrum Beta Lactamases. Basically, these are enzymes pumped out by some gram-negative bacteria, like E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, and Proteus mirabilis. Their superpower? Breaking down a whole range of beta-lactam antibiotics, including third- and fourth-generation cephalosporins. Think ceftriaxone, ceftazidime, and cefotaxime. They even tackle monobactams like astreonum. But there's a twist. ESBLs don't touch carbapenems or cefamycins, and they're blocked by beta-lactamase inhibitors like clavulanic acid, sulbactam, and tazobactam. Here's a cool clinical clue. Sometimes a bacterial strain looks totally resistant to ceftriaxone, but suddenly regains sensitivity when a beta-lactamase inhibitor is added. So, those bacteria might still be treatable with cefamycins, like cefoxetin, or carbapenems, like meropenem and imipenem. Now, how do I actually spot these ESBL producers in the lab? One classic technique is the double-disc synergy test. I place discs of cephalosporins next to a disc loaded with clavulanic acid. If the zone of inhibition expands, or you see a keyhole effect toward the inhibitor disc, that means ESBL activity. The discs are usually set 20 millimeters apart, but that might change based on resistance levels. Another option is the ESBL gradient test. I use a plastic strip with a gradient. One end has just the antibiotic, the other mixes in clavulinate. After overnight incubation, if the MIC ratio is 8 or more, that's confirmation. You've got an ESBL producer. Early detection here is critical. It guides treatment choices and helps prevent outbreaks, especially in busy hospital wards. If you found this helpful, hit like, share with your friends, and subscribe for more microbiology insights right here on El Microbiologist. See you next time.